No, that's rash. That's rash. You have to do the sacrifices. No, I'm not gonna do it. That's rash. Do do some now. I'm hungry. Welcome to Joel Reads Bible. I'm Joel, and I read the Bible so that you don't have to. And we have been reading Leviticus. We are five chapters in, and they've been pretty repetitive. Not not gonna lie, but. I think I've made them fun. I was pretty depressed when we talked about the tabernacle and all its contents twice, uh, the exact same way, basically. And it was so redundant. It was so boring both times. But although these sacrifices do have some points of similarity, and the points of difference aren't that interesting, just what they're doing, being so barbaric, is a little bit interesting. And we can have fun with it. So I think we've had a pretty fun start Maybe I'm just feeling fresh because it's not about the tabernacle directly. But let's get right into it. You know what? If you haven't subscribed, I love you for making me work for it. You know what I mean? Keep me on my toes. You know, because I'm at the edge of my seat and I'm going, am I going to get another subscriber? And if you're going to do that for me right now, well, that's going to blow my mind. Because I'm humble. I don't think that everyone's going to just jump up and down and subscribe automatically. So anyway, if you could just do that right now, please, thanks. And then like the video and comment. I would really do appreciate that. In the meantime, let's start Leviticus chapter 5. If anyone sins in that he hears a public adjuration to testify, he being a witness, whether he has seen or known, if he doesn't report it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Don't make me bear my iniquity. Oh no, I'm going to go around bearing an iniquity. Oh, the iniquity, the iniquity. What's iniquity? What is iniquity? I would Google it, but like, I don't know. I grew up knowing the word iniquity, by the way. And my mom taught me what iniquity was. She said that iniquity was sins that you didn't know that you were committing. But I don't think that's true. But it could be. But he's bearing his iniquity, he would know because he did witness something and he's not telling someone. So he'll know that he's withholding the truth. By the way, apparently withholding the truth is iniquity. Hmm. Let's write that down because I don't know. This one I don't know. Oftentimes I know where things are going to go and so I, you know, highlight them. I don't know if withholding the truth is wrong. But here we learn that, hey, you know that something's wrong and you don't tell someone, you're going to get in trouble. So let's hope that that never happens to one of our heroes or that Yahweh never commands it, but it is something he would do, when, isn't it? Just like totally say like, don't do that, and then just do it. For if anyone touches any unclean thing, whether it is the carcass of an unclean animal or the carcass of unclean livestock, what are livestock not animals now? Or the carcass of unclean creeping things, gross and it is hidden from him, and he is unclean, then he shall be guilty, guilty, guilty. So if anyone touches anything unclean, and it is hidden from him, so he doesn't know that he did it, he's unclean and he's guilty, but he doesn't know that. I think that there's going to be some of these sacrifices that you have to do, even if you don't know that you're sinful. And it could possibly be that this is to ensure that people, even if they're actually great, even if they're old Job's, you know what I mean? They're just like Job. They're just like totally faithful and whatever. Like, even if they're like him, they still end up giving them the meat they need, you know, or the flour or whatever. Like, they're still showing up. I think I might have touched something unclean. I don't know. Here's a baby bull. Or if he touches the uncleanness of man, whatever his uncleanness is with which he is unclean, and it is hidden from him when he knows of it, then he shall be guilty. Okay, so I guess he has to find out sometimes. It's not clear. Or if anyone swears rashly with his lips, his faltering lips, to do evil or to do good. So don't swear rashly to do good either. I'm gonna build an orphanage. No. <laughs> Whatever it is that a man might utter rashly with an oath, I swear I will build an orphanage. No, oh, that's rash. That's rash. You don't know how to build orphanage. 
You don't know how. You've never built an orphanage before. And it is hidden from him. When he knows of it, then he shall be guilty of one of these. They're hidden from the guy that's doing it. He's like, did I? I was rash. I was rash. I didn't realize I was being so rash. I was so rash just there. Unbelievable. Why didn't you stop me? I was doing a rash. Oh, the orphanage. I could never build an orphanage. What? I don't even know any orph orphans. There's no reason for... That was so rash. I'm guilty of rash. I'm guilty of rash. It shall be when he is guilty of one of these, he shall confess that in which he has sinned. And he shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh. For his sin, which he has sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. This is a trespass offering, but we, we had to learn what a trespass is. It's kind of knowing, but not knowing, but then eventually learning that you did something wrong, making an evil or good rash oath. I'm going to murder all my family. That was rash. Well, I guess it was. You know, we call that a threat now, you know, but then it was just a rash oath. Don't say you're going to murder your whole family if you, um, you're not going to actually do it. Okay? You can't be making those sort of evil rash oaths. Just just take some time, think about it. Sleep on it. And tomorrow if you still feel that you actually will follow through on murdering your whole family, then make the oath. But please, don't do it rashly, or you're going to have to bring a female goat to kill. If he can't afford a lamb, then he shall bring his trespass offering for that in which he has sinned. Two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, to Yahweh, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. It's like so subtle, such a subtle difference. He shall bring them to the priest who shall first offer the one which is for the sin offering. He shall, plug your ears, he shall wring off its head from its neck, but shall not sever it completely. Come on now. The last time it was right off, now it's just dangling. This is gross. He shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar. And the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It's a sin offering. So obviously, um, yeah, we're draining blood all over the place. It's a sin offering. Obviously, that's what you do with a sin. Yeah, I don't think we should have to say this. It's a sin offering. Okay. He shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the ordinance, and the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin, which he has sinned, and he shall be forgiven. Yeah, just gross, just gross stuff. Just squeeze, just to have a dangly head of a bird and then squeeze blood all over. You're forgiven. It's a sin offer. It's obviously a sin offer. Why is it? Why is this weird? Why are you looking? Why are you giving me weird looks, guys? But if he can't afford two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he shall bring as his offering for that in which he has sinned one tenth of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. Hmm. So we're not shedding blood anymore. This is definitely a sin offering, and we're definitely using flour to deal with it. He shall put no oil on it. And he shall not put any frankincense on it, for it is a sin offering. What are you, out of your mind? You're going to put oil on a sin offering? Are you crazy right now? You're going to use frankincense on a sin offering? It's a sin offering. Duh. Unbelievable. That guy almost poured oil on a sin offering. He shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it as the memorial portion and burn it on the altar on the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. It is a sin offering. Uh, the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin that he has sinned in any of these things, and he will be forgiven. 
and the rest shall be the priests as a meal offering. I get to eat the meal offering. I think that was a rash oath. Can I have some flour? I don't think it was rash. I, I meant that oath. Nope, that was rash. Give me some flour. He's like, no, I really meant that, priest. I'm never going to do another one of these effing things again. No, that's rash. That's rash. You have to do the sacrifices. No, I'm not going to do it. That's rash. Do, do some now. I'm hungry. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, if anyone commits a trespass and sins unwittingly regarding Yahweh's holy things, his holy things, these are my holy things. You guys, you guys are sinning unwittingly around my holy things. Stop it. Look, at they are sinning all over my holy things. I don't like you. That's the new Yahweh voice. Then he shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh, a ram without defect from the flock, according to your estimation in silver by shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary for trespass offering. So now we're getting into money or is it weight? I don't even know, but it's just the value of this thing. And now we're doing a ram. And again, no defect, whatever that means. I mean, rams have those like spectacular horns that have these crazy shapes and everything. Like, how do we know? Ooh, that line's a little off. Oh, that, that wrinkle's a little wrong. He shall make restitution for that which he has done wrong according to the holy thing and shall add a fifth part to it and give it to the priest. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering and he will be forgiven, forgiven. If anyone sins doing any of these things which Yahweh has commanded not to be done, Though he didn't know it, he is still guilty and shall bear his iniquity. So maybe that is iniquity when you don't know it. Maybe my mom was right because it does seem like that. If any of these sins are done, but we, we don't know, well, you're guilty and you're bearing that iniquity. But iniquity might just be another word for sin as well. He shall bring a ram without defect from the flock according to your estimation for a trespass offering to the priest. But you don't know, he doesn't know he's supposed to do that. He doesn't know that he has to do that, though. And the priest shall make atonement for him concerning the thing which he sinned and didn't know it, and he will be forgiven. It is a trespass offering. He is certainly guilty before Yahweh. This is a catch-all, man. This is the catch-all chapter. He's like, yeah, you don't know you sinned, but still do the thing that you do when you sin. <laughs> All right? I have some pretty specific laws there, so you should be able to tell when you've sinned or not. Uh, but if you don't think you've sinned, if you're not aware you've sinned, you probably have. And if you figure out that you have, definitely do it. But even if you don't know, just do it instead, just in case. And that's what Job does. That's what Job does for his sons. He's so faithful that he's doing this for his sons. We haven't gotten there, so I'm sorry I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I just know that this is going to happen. And that's very godly. That's literally what Yahweh wants everyone to do. Just in case. I think I did stuff wrong, God. Please forgive whatever it was. I don't know, but pretty sure it was something. I'm a piece of garbage, so I inevitably did something horrible. Please forgive me. A little sad. It feels sad. It feels sad to me for some reason. But anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. We've made it through the first five chapters of Leviticus so far. And guess what? We have had fun. I actually don't mind it. So we'll see you for chapter six soon. And then, of course, you know, I've been dotting in some extra special types of videos that are a little bit more unique and speak to theology or just Christians being Christians and that kind of thing. So look out for those as well. Thank you for watching. Uh, sincerely, thank you for watching, especially if you watch the full videos. There's a few of you that I know do that, and I really do appreciate it. Thanks for liking the video. Thanks to everyone who subscribed. I am really, really happy you're here. This is a nice group. It's nice to hear from people. And even the people that I bicker with a little bit or argue with, I will let you know that all of these chapters are in playlists. There's a Genesis playlist, Exodus playlist, Leviticus playlist, and we're going to do this throughout the whole entire Bible. Every single verse has a chapter, 
So if you ever want to hear another chapter and verse again, you just have to go there, click it, click the chapter, and I'll read you the verse and then make some stupid commentary on it. But I'm so happy everyone's here and enjoying these videos. I'm enjoying making them. I do complain sometimes. There is some stuff that is a little bit annoying. But I'm happy to do it for you. I'm happy to do it for me as part of my deconstruction. So thank you for being here, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.